local organizing committee in Guinea alternative Ali. The chairman of uh, the NCC governing board, Professor Adi, Okay, okay. The director general of uh, the National Information Technology Development Agency, Kashifu Inu Abdullah, CCIE. Our chief host and our respected brother as well, the vice chancellor of uh, the Nile University Professor Dini Dogo. Permit me also to recognize my dean, the Dean School of uh, ICT, Federal University of Technology, <laughs> Professor Julia Chukudebe, the president of uh, DBI, the Chief Research Advisor to the Honorable Minister of uh, Communications and Digital Academy, Professor Sahadu Juraidu. <laughs> Other participants and stakeholders to the fourth international conference taking place here. Ladies and gentlemen of uh, the press, all other protocols duly and respectfully observed. Good morning, and uh, may peace, mercy, and blessings be upon you all. I advise the organizers not to recite my citation because this is more of a, an intellectual and academic gathering. So there is need for us to reduce some of the unnecessary activities and focus on why we are here. If you need my citation, you may wish to visit the website of the ministry or the website bearing my name being posted by my ex. You can get the citation there instead of wasting our time here reading the citation of uh, Isa Ali Ibrahim. I begin by commending the effort of uh, our Nigerian section of uh, IEEE for organizing this uh, conference where we have participants on-site and online. This is indeed very commendable as the chair has rightly observed voluntary activities are uh, highly worrisome and sometimes not encouraged in Africa. However, with all the challenges, we must continue to do the best we can. And this is why we are on this cosmos, to serve humanity. And through voluntary activities, there are 1,001 ways of uh, serving humanity. Furthermore, the theme of uh, this year's conference is very apt and also in alignment with what we have been doing at the federal level, particularly at the Federal Ministry of uh, Communications and Digital Economy, that is disruptive technologies for sustainable development. While the topic given to me to discuss superficially here, is Nigeria 5G readiness and impact on our digital economy mandate. Both of them are very relevant to what we have been doing at the federal level, particularly at the Federal Ministry of our Communications and Digital Economy. On 17 October 2019, Mr. President has approved our request to amend the mandate of the ministry and focus more on digital economy. It is through his approval that the ministry was redesignated to Ministry of our Communications and Digital Economy. After the redesignation, we were directed to come over with a national policy. We crafted a national policy entitled as the National Digital Economy Policy and Strategy for a Digital Nigeria. The President Muhammad Buhari was at the International Conference Center in passing to launch the policy on the 28th of November 2019. Since then, we have been working on the implementation of this policy, and this is even what brought about 
our journey with regards to 5G in Nigeria. In that policy, there are eight pillars. Pillar number one is developmental regulation. Pillar number two is digital skills. Pillar number three is solid infrastructure. Pillar number four is service infrastructure. Pillar number five is digital services. Pillar number six is soft infrastructure. Pillar number seven is emerging digital society and emerging technologies. And pillar number eight is indigenous content development and promotion. So if you look at the theme of this year's conference, it focuses more on which pillar? Pillar number seven, digital society and emerging technologies. While the topic given to me on 5G is in alignment with pillar number three, that is solid infrastructure or hard infrastructure, the provision of broadband and there are many more. So by implication, the theme of the conference is in alignment with pillar number seven of our index, that is the National Digital Economy Policy and the Strategy. While the topic given to me is in alignment with pillar number three, that is the provision of hard infrastructure like broadband and uh, many more. In summary, our journey in Nigeria and our readiness with regards to the 5G deployment commenced with the launch of INDEX, that is the National Digital Economy Policy and Strategy on the 28th of uh, November 2019. However, prior to that, on the 25th of uh, November 2019, we had a 5G trial in six locations in this country. The first one here in Abuja, number two in Lagos, number three in Ibadan, number four in Kotako, number five in Calabar, and number six in Kano. The first one was conducted here in Abuja, and I personally did the trial. That trial was to allow the federal government and all other stakeholders to have first-hand information about 5G. So after the three-month trial, we assembled a team of stakeholders from the public sector, private sector, academia, and the many more, where that team work on the outcome of that three-month trial that we earlier conducted. After reviewing the report of the trial, we also published another advert in two national dailies on the 11th of November 2020, where we invited stakeholders to look into the summary of our trial and come up with recommendations, contributions, observations, and even constructive criticism where the need arises. 22 personalities and institutions responded to that, where we receive positive contributions from them. We set up another team to look into their own contributions, recommendations, and even constructive criticism. So that team worked on their contributions for almost four to five months. However, prior to that, we had a major setback. We, have, we had a miscarriage. What happened was in June 2020 or thereabout, there was an allegation that 5G was linked with the COVID-19. And it was blown out of proportion. To the extent that some, maybe you may wish to call them intellectuals, join the allegation, intimidating government that Nigeria was not ready for 5G deployment from each and every angle. And the issue was escalated to even our religious institutions where we were receiving reports that Nigeria was not ready, 5G was related to COVID-19. And I said it there and then, even on the channel television, that uh, I did the trial in Nigeria. I personally did the first trial of 5G in Nigeria here. And at, as at that time, I did many COVID tests. All of them were negative. <laughs> All of them. And I'm the first person who did. So if there is any relationship by implication, ESA should be the number one victim. 
And to date, I did over 65 communities in Nigeria. Over 65. And I'm grateful to the Almighty. I remain very healthy. And at that time, there was a deployment of 5G in Lesotho, but there wasn't any case of COVID-19 there. But as a government official, we are always urged to listen to the complaints of our citizens. Responsible complaints and even irresponsible ones, we have to listen and respond according to the demand of that situation. So we put everything on hold. And I directed Nigeria, the Nigerian Communications Commission to go out and create more awareness. So they did so, deploying our local languages, Hausa, Igbo, Yoruba, and after that, I said, go beyond that. Identify other Nigerian languages, like Kaduri and Gires, and engage our citizens. LCC did that for almost six months. In the course of doing that also, I received another invitation from uh, the National Assembly that there was a petition restricted to the National Assembly about COVID-19 that that one should be put on hold. So I had to meet my Mr. President and brief him. He said, okay, go there and defend it. I believe you can do that. And based on what we have at our disposal with regards to 5G, I am convinced and there is no going back. We were at the National Assembly and I was called upon to defend and I did so. With all sense of humility, they were all convinced. Some stakeholders were there in order to challenge, but after the presentation, it just becomes copy and paste. Whoever stands up will just comment what we have been doing and give his own support. So, and uh, also by September 2021 also, the Federal Executive Council, to be specific, on the 8th of September 2021, the Federal Executive Council approved our national policy on 5G deployment for the digital economy sector. And I asked my technical assistant, Dr. Fermi, to come with some copies of uh, the policy, and I do hope they are going to be distributed to the participants of this uh, conference. At least 50 copies are here with you. So it was approved by the Federal Executive Council, and Mr. President personally launched the policy, and uh, NCC was also directed to conduct the auctioning for the 5G spectrum, particularly 3.5 gigahertz. They did so in the December 2021, and two winners have been assigned the spectrums, and now they are in the process of a pizza deployment. So this is, in summary, the journey so far with regards to 5G in Nigeria. However, as we all know, that 5G is part of the fourth industrial revolution, part of the emerging technologies. This is the only revolution that Africa is not far from the developed countries. If you look at the first, second, and the third industrial revolution, there was a huge gap between Africa and the developed countries. This is the only industrial revolution that we are able to bridge the gap significantly. And it is because of the fact that we are being proactive, and at the same time we are developing our talent. If you look at the first industrial revolution, which was mainly on steam power or steam engine that was uh, invented by Mr. James Watt around 1780. At that time, the world focused more on agriculture, trade, and few other things. And at that time, the only source of power was through the nature's force, where commodities were being converted from one point to another using horses and donkeys. And even if there are measures, they were being placed on, on these are donkeys and horses to convey commodities from one point to another. With the invention of a steam engine, things started to change. If you look at this, and that revolution was significantly and largely in Britain, in the United Kingdom, and specifically in Liverpool and Manchester. Then the second industrial revolution, 
that was the era of electricity, the era of engine combustion, and the era of uh, mass production. That one commenced around 1850 up to 1920, a period of about 70 years. And even that one was largely in the United Kingdom. However, some other few countries were chasing the UK. They were called chess group, like uh, Belgium, France, Germany, and the United States of America. They were chasing the UK at that time. They were called chess group. So it was the time for the invention of our electricity. And when electricity was invented, the first street light to be installed in the United Kingdom was in Liverpool and London around 1880. At that time, it was resisted. Many clergymen were challenging that. They said, just to compare with the resistance of 5G, they said, Almighty God said in his divine books, in his scripture, that he created the day and the night. If we install electricity street light at night, by implication, we are converting the night to look like the day. So we are changing the creation of the Almighty. So they resisted. But today, go to London and see the street lights. <laughs> so, so, so the second industrial revolution was largely in the UK, followed by Belgium, Germany, France, and the United States of America. Then this brought about the third industrial revolution, which commenced around 1921 in the UK and the Chess Group. All of them combined together. And added to that, Japan and Australia joined the third industrial revolution. And the third industrial revolution was an era of computerization. The era of internet, World Wide Web. All of them were invented within the third industrial revolution. So it was more about communications and about computerization, automation, and uh, online activities. And this is what brought us again to the fourth industrial revolution. However, there was an argument whether the fourth industrial revolution has commenced or not. According to the founder of a World Economic Forum and also a German scientist and also a German economist by name Klaus Schwab, he said that the fourth industrial revolution commenced from 2001 to date. And this is an era of the creation of another world that is a virtual world. We, had, we have a physical world, a biological world, and now we have another virtual world. And sometimes we are even more addicted to the virtual world than our physical world. Many, many a times you know what is happening online than what is happening within your environment or your estate. Your neighbor, somebody could pass away in the farm within the, your neighbor's house, you couldn't know. It is only when that is a pested online that you come to realize that something has happened. Because sometimes even while <laughs> moving from one point to another, we are busy on our phones. So the fourth industrial revolution is all about the creation of the virtual world. And this virtual world is being created by the disruptive technologies. 5G, artificial intelligence, robotics, quantum computing, cloud computing, augmented reality, virtual reality, and the blockchain technology among others. And this is what brought about the fourth industrial revolution. In the fourth industrial revolution, you have the UK, the chess group, including other European countries. In addition to that, we have new entries. China joined the fourth industrial revolution. It was the first time that China joined the revolution. But interestingly, they are in the forefront. If you look at what they have been inventing, you will discover that they did an excellent job. By joining the fourth, they were not even part of the third industrial revolution. They joined the fourth and they are in the forefront. And in fact, they are even trying to unnecessarily bring the fifth industrial 
revolution should be more time. Why? Because technology requires you to be proactive so that you can dominate the market. So China is a new entry, and there are a few African countries that are not far from the developed countries. And I'm glad to say Nigeria is one of them. Egypt, South Africa. There is a consensus that Africa now is not far from the developed country. And we have witnessed that looking at what our young innovators have been doing. We have been leading Nigerian teams to international conferences, competition and challenges. And you will discover that Nigerians are making us proud. In 2019, I led a team of Nigerians. They participated in JITEX competition. A young Nigerian who came up with a solution in artificial intelligence emerged as the global best. <laughs> to 